Perfect. Um, so, guys, this is the very first uh, Casas Let's Talk Tuesday with our team leaders. Welcome. We've done these last year, and it was a uh, you know, it was kind of whenever we felt like we needed to get on here and talk with y'all. Uh, but we wanted to do these now regularly of once a quarter um, just to just give some general information and news about what's going on in the ministry. But also um, if there's some main topic or issue or thing that we want to talk through with you guys, um, we want to have the opportunity to, to get your input and um, have some dialogue about that. So. The format of these, we've learned a lot doing these in the last year. Um, the format of these are going to be 30 minutes of us talking uh, and then questions at the very end. That way, if um, you need to bug out or you don't want to be here for the whole thing or you don't have any questions you want to go, you can just get out. So, um, But if you want to stay for the questions at the very end, um, feel free to... Uh, stay and to see, see what other people have to say. So it'll be 15 minutes normally of news and updates and then 15 minutes of our main discussion, uh, which today is, is going to be talking about uh, lumber pricing and how that's affecting our prices uh, moving forward just because it's an issue we, have, we need to deal with. So with that said, um, oh, and we have a giveaway. We're going to be giving something away here. I'll explain that. I have a trivia question. Um, we'll see who gets it, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, that'll be coming up here real, real soon. So, uh, Roberta, if you want to start off with our with our front portion, talking about news sure. and stuff like that, would be great. Sure. So, I just want to give a quick update and let you all know that we are still building houses in all of our locations. We're still taking mission trips to every location. The only location where we are not able to take groups of volunteers currently is our Nicaragua location, uh, which is a bummer. We just haven't been able to get flights from the airlines, regular flights running back to Nicaragua. And as a result of that, the only houses we're building there are through our Hope Restored program. We're doing about once a quarter right now in that location, um, just to keep the pastors involved and to keep um, the ministry momentum going in, in Nicaragua. But all the other locations, we are able to bring our volunteer groups. So Guatemala, Dominican, Acuna, and Juarez, all four of those locations, we're still leading groups of um, teams group trips. So that's exciting. Um, COVID was, you know, a little crazy this past year. We had a, a minute there where we were not able to do any trips, but um, thankfully, at least in those four locations, we're able to be kind of sort of mostly back to normal minus some COVID testing requirements for Guatemala and Dominican. So that's great. Um, we wanted to give you all an update on our numbers for this year. So two years ago, it was a typical year. No COVID things were happening. We built 289 homes. Um, this year, we're not gonna build quite that many. It's looking, looking like we have 146 houses on our schedule for 2021. So um, if you remember back to the beginning of January of this year, we were still in lockdown in some locations across the US and we were still not sure about travel to all, um, all locations based on different reasons with local employers having rules about like you have to quarantine for 14 days when you return and stuff the last few months those sort of rules have started to relax we've seen a little bit of an uptick in registration so that makes us hopeful for the future um, but at least for this year it's going to be a little bit of a lower year number wise for us but we're still super grateful that god's allowing us to continue building homes with our volunteer teams for at least 146 houses this year across all of our locations um, now of those 146 houses we built 51 so far this year, and 27 of those for this year are through our Hope Restored program, our Hope Restored campaign, where people are donating those funds for those houses to be built, and then our local staff in those locations are building those Hope Restored homes. So that's a little bit of the numbers. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of location and how many houses we're planning to build in each location this year. In Acuna, we have 33 houses, either built already or scheduled to be built by the end of this year. In Juarez, we're going to hit 61 by the end of this year. In Guatemala, 26. Dominican, 21. And Nicaragua, we're planning to build four. And then we've also had one special project in the Dominican on top of those typical normal house builds. So those are our numbers for 2021. And like I said, we have 
a lot of hope for the future because we have seen the registration start to pick up a little bit for this summer and fall, which gives us some hope that maybe things will get a little more back to normal as far as travel and our teams coming at a regular pace. Um, I wanna shift a little and talk about some news, um, some things going on here at CASAS that we're excited about. I don't know if you can see behind us, but we are in a new location. Um, we, instead of being in our old office that is literally falling down in some places, <laughs> I think that building's over 100 years old. Um, we, this past February, moved into our new international operations building. So it's mostly warehouse space, but there is a small office area. We're in the lobby right now. So I don't know if you can see very much behind us, but it's super nice, brand new. We spent a lot of time over the last five years getting this facility ready. So we're super grateful that God has allowed us to move in here. Um, I have warm water to wash my hands in. So I'm really <laughs> pleased for that. Um, the little things, right? Um, I have a, a water fountain that fills up my water bottle with fresh drinking water. And so that's another thing that brings me joy here in this building every day. So um, so that's one bit of news. We are also still trucking along on our admin building, which is the other building that's a little closer to the road, if you've been on our, on our property. So that building down there, we are painting right now. Yeah, which is, you can see it all over. If you, you see it on these If you look closely, you'll see paint. <laughs> so that's really exciting. Um, we've had a couple all staff work weeks where we've hung insulation and drywall, and it's been really fun to get to do do those projects together and see that project come along. So we're hoping by the end of this year, maybe, mm -hmm. to be moved into that building as well. So maybe on your next trip, you'll get to see that new space and um, see the new store set up down there. It's going to be a really sweet spot to, to get to meet up with your missionary and go through the store and have nice bathrooms that are functional to you. <laughs> so we're really excited about it. So you guys can keep praying that everything goes smoothly with that. It's been a learning curve with permitting and working with the city and stuff. So that's where we're at on our buildings. Um, as far as our staff goes, we are looking to hire for two roles here at CASAS. So if you know anybody who is a graphic designer or a videographer, we are actively seeking to hire for those two roles here at CASAS. So those are full-time missionary positions. They work in the office, but they also lead builds. So if you know of anybody who loves mission work and is good at graphic design or videography, please put a bug in their ear for us. We would love to chat with them about the possibility of hiring them to work here. And then we also have 15 summer interns coming to work with us this summer. Um, we're super excited about that. Again, with COVID, we weren't sure how that would look this summer, but we're super excited to have them come along. Um, six guys are going to be doing building internships here in Juarez. Three girls are going to do building internships in Acuna. And we have another three ladies going to Guatemala to do building internships there. And then we have two admin interns who are going to be working here in our office this summer. So a good mix of some exciting stuff going on there. They're all supposed to arrive this coming weekend. So again, you can be praying for them in their transition here and all that God's going to do in their lives. I know. For most of our staff, the internship program here was a big moment in our timeline and our journey. So um, we interned together. Yeah, back in 2006. We sure did. <laughs> Changed our lives forever. It did. <laughs> <laughs> no, mostly for the good. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, we're going to transition back to Justin. I think you were going to do. I am. The giveaway. Yeah, so if you were looking at the email, we are giving away a water bottle. I don't know if you have this one yet. If if you win and you have this one, we'll, we'll go our options. But uh, I brought that one. Uh, this really cool, we all have something to give, coffee mug. Everyone needs another coffee mug, right? Literally everyone. And then uh, we've got Guatemala coffee here. We, we've got the uh, grounds right here. And then we have the whole beans here. You just tell me which one you would prefer and we'll send you that one. Um, but I wanted to do this giveaway and I wanted to do a trivia question based on our main uh, topic for the day, right? Yeah, Renee's rolling her eyes at me, but that's okay. Uh, so we're gonna, there's a chat feature uh, in Google Meet on the side. You can put your answers in there. But um, how many or how much linear board feet have we put into Casas houses in our entire history? So this is two by fours, uh, two by sixes, 
and one by fours is what I use to calculate this. So if you were to lay all those out in all of our history um, in a line, uh, how many feet would that be? So uh, this is Price is Right rules, okay? Price is Right rules. So if you go over. And just so you know, we've built 6,046 homes. So if you need that kind of as a, as a reference. So <laughs> I see the first one here. Who's really good at math and been on lots of builds? That's what we're that's what we're gonna see here. I'm guessing. Okay, Ramy's got three million. I think that's what that is. How many zeros is there? I need a comma. I need my reading glasses. So <laughs> Ben is nine nine nine. That's such a prices right answer right there. <laughs> Four million. Go with the low bid one. <laughs> Man, three somebody, million, two million, two hundred, two thousand. <laughs> Mess with them. <laughs> These are pretty good. Oh, I like this one. Three million and one. Good job, Karen. <laughs> I like that. You're ruthless. Uh, four and a half million is Lori's guess. Is there a bonus if they can figure out geographically on the Earth where it would get us to? Well, the What's the guy from Prizes Right? What's his name? The old guy. The old Bob guy. Barker, right? Bob Barker. Yeah. So if you guessed right on the money uh -huh. to get on on the deal, he would give you five hundred dollars out of his pocket. And that one happened okay. a few times. <laughs> I'm not giving you five hundred dollars, so <laughs> I, I really doubt you'll guess it right on. So I think we've got. Uh, do we have them all in? I hope we do. We're gonna go with that. Daryl put three point five. Is this a million? Is this 3.5 million? Okay, All right, that's what I figured. And Michael, is this just one? Are you just being are you just being clever with one, or is this one million? Okay, one. It's one. It's literally okay. one. I think everybody else All right. ever did. So the it looks like to me the winner is uh, Mike Harbin. Good job. So you're, you're closest. We've actually put eight million eight hundred and seventy thousand nine hundred and sixty linear board feet into houses. So I, I decided I wanted to see how far this was. This gets you about from El Paso to about halfway up through Canada, if we were just to lay them out one by one, which is pretty cool. So good job, Mike Harbin. Um, and w with that, uh, that'll transition well into lumber prices. What's going on? Is it kicking our butt? What do we have to do about it? Uh, I'll turn it over to David. The lumber prices have made for a great one-two punch. The first punch being COVID and the second punch uh, being lumber prices. Um, there, there are a number of different factors that have gone into causing lumber prices to, to go up as dramatically as they have. But um, if you've tried to do any home improvement project or anything like that, and you've been by a home improvement store, you've had that sticker shock looking at the price. Um, just just as one example, um, last January, we purchased two semi loads of, of OSB because we, we knew it was a, a historically great price and we got it roughly for, for about seven dollars. Um, and right now, uh, that same product isn't going for two or three or four times. It's going for about seven times the cost. It's going for forty nine fifty dollars. And so um, if you have in the Mexico houses, that is a, a pretty large um, commodity there. Um, so the lumber prices have just been overwhelming. We've been hoping we've been seeing the trends of them going up a little bit. Um, and we've been able to sort of hold off on making any changes. One, because in Mexico, as an example, we've been living off of that two semi loads uh, full of, of OSB. Scott, who's on the call, has been driving OSB back and forth between the two locations. Um, in other areas, um, we've seen anything that's a lumber commodity, whether it's a two by four, a two by six, a one by material, that price has been two and three times the cost. Um, we're seeing price increases in insulation, just every commodity we seem uh, to see going up. Um, in Guatemala and Nicaragua, we have not seen 
that that drastic effect because in those countries they mill the the lumber there in, in their own country and so they haven't been affected by supply and demand here in the states uh, they've been able to go ahead and, and continue to get their materials at pretty much the same cost than the normal fluctuation that we we anticipate um, in the u.s as i mentioned we have seen just just incredible difficulty even securing uh, some products. Um, the one that's been the real kicker for us has been the Dominican Republic. Um, they are on an island and everything that they have has to be shipped in. And so right now with, with supply and demand the way it is in the United States, um, instead, of, instead of these lumber brokers choosing to ship their their lumber overseas to an island, they're going, we'll just keep it here. And so the Dominican, uh, we're having a hard time even finding material. Um, earlier this month, uh, when Josh was looking around, there was, there was literally not a single board foot of siding to be found anywhere on the island. Um, since that time, they actually got a shipment in that has a little bit, but the prices are so far through the roof, the, the availability of lumber is so far through the roof in the Dominican that if you've been paying attention to our uh, social media the last week, or if you follow Josh and some of those other staff in the Dominican, you'll see that we have had them building some prototype houses of some other material to see if it would even be feasible or viable to, to build our homes there out of another material so that it wouldn't be so cost prohibitive. Um, they completed an all cinder block house and the all cinder block house really, uh, they said five, but really it ended up being closer to six full days. And that included them hiring uh, about six professional uh, masons to be able to build that. And so just the logistics of a team being able to come in and start and build everything and present it as a free gift uh, uh, from God that represents his grace just wasn't going to happen. And with figuring in the cost of having to hire um, pro local professionals, it, it just, even though the block was cheaper, it just sent the price up. Um, the other thing that they're doing is they're going to be building a second prototype house. And that one um, has them doing a, a combination. Uh, again, we could still find two by fours, two by sixes at a much higher cost but we were able to find them. And so we are framing it up out of two by material like always, but we're gonna bring in some of the Mexico design and sheath the exterior, chicken wire and stucco it. And so we are gonna, we're trying that again to be able to explore all possibilities so that we can still provide a home for a family that's in need so that the local church has that open door to be able to share the gospel and yet have it be team friendly uh, and not so cost prohibitive. So we're waiting for that second one to be built. And Josh again is going to uh, figure that out, see, see how that goes, if it's even a possibility. And so we're, we're looking for that uh, to happen. But just in general, um, the prices of lumber are, um, are, are through the roof right now. And it's, hard to anticipate when the prices are coming down. From the investigation we've done across the industry, the most hopeful is that sometime in the late fall, we will see at least a stop to the rising cost and that hopefully, hopefully from there, things will start to, to come back down. But uh, again, there's a number of things that play into how the lumber industry got to the place that it is at this point. Um, for us, that doesn't really matter to us. We're just stuck with, with the results of it and the ramifications. And so what we did is we went through and we looked and got hard numbers from all of our, all of our field directors on exactly the increase in material cost over what we had budgeted uh, last May at about this time is when we typically set our, our house prices. 
and just an increase over what that projected material, that budget material cost was. And so um, in Nicaragua, Guatemala, we don't see a change there. Um, and the Dominican will know after this weekend when they're done building that second one. Um, in, in Juarez, Mexico, that material cost is $930 higher, just in materials per house. Um, in Acuna, that price is $635. And uh, so what we've done is we, we had to stop the bleeding uh, for all of the incredible blessings that God did last year through COVID and so many of our supporters donating, uh, not to not just to the ministry in general, but to our missionaries specifically, uh, we were able to hold off implementing phase two and phase three uh, of budgetary cuts. And God has been gracious and, and amazing that way. And now, like I said, that second punch of the lumber prices has come through. And so what we have done, and, and you guys have all gotten emails and correspondence about this, but it was that as of April 27th, any new registrations that came in as of April 27th would be added that, that service charge, if you will, of the price increase in materials. Not any increasing our overhead, nothing like that, just the materials cost. And so, in Juarez and Acuna, that's 930 and 635. Um, then, then what we did is to try and phase it in so that it wasn't as it wasn't necessarily a penalty to teams that, in good faith, had registered and didn't anticipate the prices going up. Uh, we said for those teams that are already registered for May and June, um, we're asking if you're able to help defray some of that cost. We're, we're still gonna honor the, the prices that we had in place, but we're also being honest with our teams and saying, this is just bare, bare numbers on materials cost for lumber specifically. And we've asked if you would be willing to help cover that cost. Uh, then beginning in Jul the teams that are already registered that are scheduled to come in July and August. Um, in Juarez, we have Asked, we have we have put in a four hundred and fifty dollar service uh, charge, and we're absorbing the the rest of the balance up to nine hundred and thirty. But again, we're offering teams. This is this is the truth of where it's at. If you can help, we'll we'd appreciate the help. In Acuna, uh, teams that are in July and August, it is here's uh, we're asking you to cover three hundred dollars of of the six hundred six hundred thirty five dollar increase but yet letting you know these are the real numbers and if you'd like to help cover that cost uh, we we would greatly appreciate it um, and then starting in september through the end of the year we're we're going to all of them in mexico being able to just go ahead and, and cover the change in our materials cost and so that is something that we're looking at anytime we're presented with something new we try and put in place a mechanism that isn't a rigid and fit thing. And so by putting a, a service charge in there, that's just a materials cost, uh, we're able to go, our materials went up by $150 or $930 and we can adjust that. But by the same token, uh, we're, not, we're not in this for profit. And so if our prices go down, we can also reduce that service charge as well. And so that's just some of the way that we're trying to be flexible during this time and yet still be prudent about making adjustments that need to be made. And so th those, are, those are the numbers of where we're at. And again, we'll, uh, we'll have those numbers for the Dominican after, after this weekend, and that'll be out there. Um, and I know we're going to have time for questions in here just a bit. And so one last thing that I would, I would suggest is that if you're still in a place where you're unable to, to make the trip that you have planned, if you have those funds available, we would love for you to be able to donate those funds so that we can still build uh, for these families in, uh, through our Hope Restored uh, program. I was, for the first time uh, since... February, I got to travel this last week. 
I was visiting one of our churches that has come faithfully with us uh, for for nearly a decade. And uh, they their words to me were, we may only have six to eight people. And if we can get six to eight people, we'll, we'll still go on the trip. We'll have to depend on some of the local labor that you guys ha have developed through this COVID season to help us out. He says, but if we're not able to go, this trip was a budgeted item and our budget is doing well. And so we will fund that trip if nothing else. And so just like last year, when we, when we uh, reached out to you guys and said, Hey, we understand that as leadership in churches and different things, there's different types of liability and risk that everyone has to look at. And if you're unable to physically make uh, the trip as a team yourself, we would ask that you might consider donating towards Hope Restored uh, so that we can still have these families uh, that are on our list built for. The one that's, that's really heartbreaking for me is Nicaragua. Uh, we had a great launch going on in Nicaragua. Uh, there's some people on the screen that I'm looking at that actually were in Nicaragua with me at the beginning of the year. And it was looking for all intents and purposes like we were gonna hit our 25 homes that we were projecting. And so we had received 25 applications and two months into the year, it all got shut down and we were able to build a handful of Hope Restored. And so we still have uh, 10 to 12 families on the list that were anticipating receiving a home and those local churches and pastors that were anticipating being able to share the gospel with them through that uh, mechanism that are, are just being held up. And so right now, uh, like, like Roberta said, we're doing at least one a quarter. We have taken funds that have been donated and allocated them to that Nicaragua location. Um, but that's the one that we'd really like to get back into. So that, that's just something to, to let you all know about. Um, I did have also one of our team leaders that has been on bills with us and has also been involved in uh, supporting some Hope Restored bills mentioned to us that the Hope Restored, the finances, the, the number that we present, the dollar number, covers the typical build and trip. What it doesn't cover, and honestly, I'm not sure if we ever thought about this before he said it, it doesn't cover what we pay the local volunteers to do. Uh, and in Guatemala and the Dominican especially, where they lost their jobs, we had we had a regular crew of eight to 10 people that would come out and in essence, this was their job. Otherwise they would have had no income. And so we paid them 200, 250 bucks a week um, has gone per project to, to go and, and help pay for these workers. And so um, th that team leader was like, hey, you know, knowledge is power. And so if you can even share that with the rest of the teams, if they're considering sponsoring a Hope Restored, you might, you know, just let them know all of the details that there's also an added cost that, that you guys as CASAs are just absorbing to pay for some, some national workers. And so, um, you know, Justin mentioned last year that we did some meetings like this and we learned a lot from you guys and we implemented a lot of your ideas. And so when that team leader suggested that, we went, no, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and honor that request and say, y'all can, can think about that as well. And so that, that's just some of the, the position where we're at financially, not necessarily the news of where we're at. Um, that's, that's where we're at with our cost per projects. We typically, the last bit I'll share on that is we typically set our prices for the upcoming year in May at our May board meeting, we are bumping that back to our September board meeting this year so that we can have as accurate of an idea of what's gonna happen with lumber futures and commodities as we can. And so hopefully instead of saying, hey, at late fall, it might stop going up, we'll have better information in September to make a more educated decision. So at that point, I think, uh, I think that's everything I had to share. Perfect. So if you all have any questions or anything you'd like to, to discuss about that specifically, I know some of the, all the price increases and in the timing is location specific and month specific to when yeah. you're coming. So if you have any questions that 
you would just like clarify it or anything you'd like to talk about, now's the time. So you could type it in the chat or you can go ahead and unmute yourself and um, then we'll discuss. He did a good job. <laughs> Anybody? Hey, this is Allison here. Um, I'm from a church south of Houston, Texas, and uh, I just wanted to get on and say thank you guys for doing this work and putting this stuff together for all of us. I mean, praise God for um, for getting you guys through and, and, and getting everything through this past year. And uh, and as you guys go forward. You know, we're all here behind you praying and, and supporting. Thank you. There's got to be a pastor around here somewhere. They love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> right? Somewhere on here. A question came up just before the uh, meeting started, and one of the guys asked, how many, how many windows or a typical house going into Juarez? Three. Three. Three windows? Yep. Yeah, perfect. One, one per room, yep. yep. Perfect. Thank you. Now we have to come up with a trivia question based on how many windows we put in all of our homes. <laughs> uh, 9,000. <000. laughs> Six thousand forty-six yeah, times three I, is for yeah. all of you. 18,000. I've been hailed too many paint today to do that math. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have to be lumber prices related. It could be really, oh, thanks, Richard. You're the math guy. Good job. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be lumber related, but if you have any uh, anything you'd like to share or any questions that um, you may have had or you've had in the back of your head for a while, you have us available right now. You have the big boss, the leader of scheduling right here, and I'm probably good for some, some answer of something. So... Um, I have one question regarding our Guatemala trip um, that we have scheduled the week before Thanksgiving. Um, we so far don't have a solid team as of yet, simply because of the concerns around the COVID and getting back into the United States. I know we're not the only team that have people who are concerned regarding this. So, can you guys speak on behalf of the teams that have already gone and built in I, Guatemala? I can do better than that. I can let a team leader that has already been there in February speak to that. Mike, would you like to jump in? Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad. If we were there in February. We have uh, 24 people going in June, and uh, our experience was was wonderful. Uh, there. As far as we know, there have been few, if any, cases reported in uh, San Raimundo, and uh, we we were allowed to go uh, back to the city, to Guatemala City, to get our COVID test, uh, to return to the state. Uh, I'm a medical person, so I can tell you it was fairly goofy in the sense that we tested two days before we left, and then we tested again two days after we got there, so there was no logical reason that we could have obtained the uh, the virus and become symptomatic in that short of time. But the rule is written for, you know, the whole across the board thing. But we went into the city and got tested. It was a beautiful clinic that we went to, probably cleaner than most of the ones you go to in the United States. It was very professionally handled. They handed us a document to present to the airlines when we got to the airport that was color printed and, and, and very professional looking and it was absolutely no problem to get in and out of there. It's my understanding that uh, they've now made arrangements with this testing company called Blue Clinic or something like that, that they actually come up to San Ramundo and do the testing right there in the city. So uh, I, I have no reservations at all about saying uh, it, there's there's no fear at all about going. It's, it's They've got it set up uh, very professionally, as Casas always does. So uh, take away all those fears. Like I said, I went from eight people in February to 24 people in in June just because 
of the positive experience they had and the way they advertised and promoted when they got back. Thank you, Mike. I have got a past question. We've got a mother with her two teenage sons who are coming. They're like, well, I think one is 12 and the other one is 13. And she is having trouble. She's looking for the, the passports in January and they fast track them and everything. They still have not come in. Um, as I'm reading the information, they can get back into the country with, with their parents with just a birth certificate. Are, are you traveling and, to Mexico? Yes. Okay, absolutely. Yes, so and, our teams use... And, and, and they, can get, they can get into Mexico and out of, the, out of Mexico with just the birth certificate. Absolutely. Yes, many of our teams uh, have done that over the years with anybody who is a minor age 18 and younger, just even a Xerox photocopy of their birth certificate will suffice as their documentation to return to the U.S. Going into Mexico, they won't even look at your documentation, so you, and know, you shouldn't you know, need anything there. Even for added piece there, if, if you can have a copy of the the application and the date of when you submitted for the passport, um, yep. that's just extra. And they, the border uh, agents here know that they're backed up and backlogged. And so that goes a long way as well. Beautiful. You will ease her troubled mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Sue Swikeisen. And we're from Community Reform. We work currently in Guatemala, thus behind me. Um, and <laughs> They, you are correct, the earlier gentlemen, they are coming tomorrow morning to us right here to do the testing. So we don't have to go into Guatemala City. They'll just come right to us, which awesome. is awesome. Anyone else? Ooh, Lori, that is awesome. You are correct. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, well, like always, uh, we're easy to get a hold of. If you need us, uh, Monday through Friday, Mountain Time, we're here from uh, 9 to 5. You can give us a call or you can send us an email. Um, I'll type it in the chat right here. I'm sure you know them, but. Um, Do questions. Take you it got it. Whoever needs Questions at casasporcristo.org. All right, I'm, I'm, everyone's staring at me, so it's, I'm not doing a good job. Okay, question. I put questions. Okay, so you can use this email address um, any point. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Uh, we, we're going to do another one of these in about the three more months or so uh, on a Tuesday because it's let Let's Talk Tuesday. It's like Taco Tuesday, but you're talking with us instead. Uh, we should but eat tacos next time. We could, we could eat them while they're watching us. Sure. And we could all eat tacos together. That's a great idea. Um, but anyway, you, you guys are our backbone. You're our heart. You know, um, we can't, we, none of us is doing this ministry without you. So uh, we appreciate you guys so much for um, your continued fights to try to get teams together and come serve with us. and. Uh, we know it's been uh, an uphill battle for a little while to do that. Um, but we just want to thank you for your cont continued commitment to uh, to serve alongside of us, to these families, uh, alongside these pastors and the different communities we serve in. And um, love you guys. I'm going to say a quick prayer for you, and then um, we'll get out of here. So, uh, Lord, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity just to meet together again. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it doesn't matter what the, the circumstances are or what's happening on this on this earth. Uh, you continue to show us ways of provision and uh, grace and just an incredible amount of love for us. And Lord, uh, to be able to continue to do the ministry that we've done together this, this past year, uh, more than a year now, uh, under adverse con conditions, God, you've, you've come through in a big way. Um, just thank you for taking care of us, and, and thank you for continuing to allow us to participate in such an amazing ministry to to families and communities 
um, in this world that needs you. And uh, Lord, we're just also thankful for how you change us and how you love us along the way. Um, Lord, just we just pray that you would continue to help us to have faith that you're going to take care of all our all the plans we're trying to get together um, in order to serve God. You you have it already lined up, and um, we just thank you again for just everything you, you've been doing. Lord, we trust you with these lumber prices. We trust you with. Uh, the, the, the families we're going to build for and the communities we're going to be in, we do, we trust you in all things. No, we love you. It's your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. We love you guys. Take care. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.